Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to review something called the square root property that enables us to solve equations where we have a variable squared equal to a number. For example, if we have x squared equals 9, the square root property tells us that x is either the positive or negative square root of 9. So x would either be plus or minus 3. 3 squared just means 3 times 3, which is equal to 9. And negative 3 squared equals negative 3 times negative 3, which is also equal to 9. So there are always two possible answers when you have a variable squared equal to a number. So what the square root property says is if x squared is equal to some number n, then x is plus or minus the square root of n. Let's look at a couple of examples. So here the instructions say solve each equation using the square root property, give an exact solution. If the solution involves a radical expression, also give a decimal approximation rounded to the nearest hundredth. So we're going to start with part a which says that c squared is equal to 49. So the square root property tells us that that means that c is equal to plus or minus the square root of 49. Well, what's the square root of 49? You can either use your calculator to take the square root of 49 and see that you get 7. Or remember, all that square root means is what number squared equals 49. So making a list of perfect squares, we see that 7 squared equals 49. So C is either positive or negative 7. If we had to list out the solutions to this equation, we would need to include both positive 7 and negative 7 in our solution set. Now we were able to apply the square root property at this step because we had a variable squared equal to a number. Sometimes equations aren't already set up in that way and we have to rearrange a little bit first. So let's look at 4x squared equals 100, which is part B. The x squared is not by itself yet. So you can't use the square root property. You need to divide both sides by 4 to get that x squared by itself first. This gives us x squared equals 25. Then by the square root property, that would mean that x would have to be plus or minus the square root of 25. Remember, squaring a number and taking a square root, those two operations reverse each other. So that would mean that x is either the positive or negative version of the square root of 25. But what number squared is equal to 25? The number 5. So we have plus or minus 5. In other words, the solutions to this equation are either 5 or negative 5. Either of those two values would make the equation true. Let's do one more. Now let's solve 7a squared minus 21 equals 0. Remember, when we have a variable squared, if there's no other variable in the equation, what you want to do is get that variable squared equal to a number so you can use the square root property. That means we have to get a squared by itself in this problem. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 21 to both sides of the equal sign, keeping the balance. That gives us 7a squared equals 21. Then I'm going to divide by that coefficient 7 in order to get the a squared completely by itself. Dividing both sides by 7 gives us a squared equals 3. Now I'm going to apply the square root property. If a squared is equal to 3, a is equal to plus or minus the square root of 3. So there are actually two solutions, either the positive square root of 3 or the negative of the square root of 3. But in our instructions we were told that if you have a radical like this one that cannot be simplified because 3 is not a perfect square, then they wanted us to get a decimal approximation. So I'm going to open up my calculator. All right, so I'm going to take the square root of 3, which is 1.73 and so on. We're going to round to the nearest hundredth, so that's going to be approximately 1.73. So our answers are approximately 1.73 or negative 1.73. 
Now, the purpose of this video is to review the square root property so that we can use it in geometry. And usually in geometry, we're going to be working an application problem like finding the length of the side of a triangle. So in that case, we wouldn't want the negative version of the answer and we would only have to use the positive version. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up because that helps other students to find the video.